Let me now introduce the candidates for the Richland School Board. Running for Director 1 are Heather Cleary and Ron Higgins, and for Director 2 are Lloyd Becker and Rick Janssens. We did the closest to my birthday thing again, and um, we're going to begin our opening statements with Director 1 candidate Ron Higgins. Hello, my name is Ron Higgins. I want to thank the League of Women Voters for giving the other candidates and me an opportunity to tell the voters who we are and why we are running. I retired from the Department of Energy in 2009 after 35 years in energy-related industries. I worked at Hanford's N Reactor teaching reactor operators, among whom was uh, Joe Cleary, Mrs. Cleary's husband, and worked for the Nuclear Regulatory Commission administering reactor operator licensing exams. Before that, I was a Marine Corps helicopter pilot in Vietnam, an air station training officer retiring from the reserves as a lieutenant colonel. I have two master's degrees, one in chemical engineering from the University of Washington. After retiring, I earned my teaching certificate with a math endorsement in 2010. Since then, I have substitute taught in six public school districts, including Richland, and have substituted in every grade from preschool through high school, including bilingual and special ed. I was also a school bus driver. My wife and I have lived in Richland for over 20 years. We have two grown children, both Richland High grads. My youth involvement includes Boy Scouts, youth soccer referee, and mentor for Ignite Youth Mentoring. I'm running to preserve two foundational educational principles, local control and parental involvement. Unfortunately, the educational hierarchy wants to replace these principles with centralized control from Washington, D.C. and minimize parental involvement. One program that will undermine local control is the Common Core curriculum, which sets nationwide standards and leads to federal control of education. Complaints about Common Core are many, but two by professional educators include mass standards that teach very little arithmetic and English standards that omit classical literature and fail to teach cursive writing. Melissa Harris Perry, a Tulane University political science professor, stated, we have to break through our kind of private idea that kids belong to their parents or kids belong to their families and recognize that kids belong to whole communities. Once it's everyone's responsibility and not just the households, then we start making better investments. In our less enlightened days, such proposals would be considered tantamount to kidnapping. Our children are our investments and belong to their parents, not to Professor Harris Perry. I am running to maintain parental control of education at the local level. Thank you. Mrs. Clary. Okay. Good evening. My name is Heather Cleary, and I'm proud to have served as a Richland School Director for the past eight years. My husband Joe and I have lived here for 22 years and raised our children who attended and graduated from Richland Schools. I initially got involved with schools through my children, and eventually that involvement grew into serving on the school board. I'm excited about the Richland School District current initiatives and what the future holds for our district. It's fun to serve on a school board where many of our students are flourishing. We have incredible teachers and staff members who work daily to help our students reach their potential. There are wonderful programs that exist to meet the many needs of our students, ranging from special education to gifted students. There are a variety of choices to engage students, such as drama, music, art, career and technical ed classes and athletics. It's important for the district to have a variety of programs so students are engaged in learning and discover their skills and their interests as they prepare themselves for life beyond our classrooms. The district also works hard to provide quality facilities that are clean, safe, and in good working condition. Student safety is our highest priority. I've always believed that our community is only as good as the quality of the schools we provide. And it has always been my desire to have Richland schools be the best that they can be. Thank you. Thank you. We'll now turn to Director 2 position, and Mr. Janssens will go first. Thank you. My name is Rick Janssens, and I'm running for re-election to the Richland School Board. First, I'd like to thank the League of Women Voters and each of you for uh, participating in, in our election process. I'm seeking re-election to the school board to continue the work of providing our community and students with world-class schools. 
our children are faced with challenges that demand they be prepared for 21st century skills and with the ability to be lifelong learners. I have five kids that have gone or are going through the Richland School District, and to me this is a, a personal mission as well as a community mission. In order to help all of our students meet these challenges, I will continue to work to provide more opportunities for our students, including Delta High School, Three Rivers School, and other innovative schools and programs. In these tough economic times, funds are limited. I will work to make sure your tax dollars are used wisely and to ensure our school systems are operated efficiently and effectively to deliver the best education possible. Our community showed overwhelming support and great trust in approving a bond for new and remodeled schools. I will work to make our community to make sure our community receives quality school facilities on time and on budget. Finally, I will listen to you closely and respond honestly. I will be your advocate in the school system and partner with you so that each of our children and grandchildren receive the best possible education. I ask for your support and your vote. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Becker, your opening statement. Uh, thank you for being here tonight. Uh, I'd like to thank the we uh, League of Women Voters for having me here. Uh, the reason why I'm running for school board is to bring back some of the leadership and management that, that the school district is lacking. Uh, we have a lot of things going on, uh, and, uh, and the thing that I've been noticing is that uh, they're bringing, they have and brought Common Core in. And, uh, and I see, I see a world-class school deteriorating, and it and it uh, it has no bearing on whether you're talking about uh, Delta High School or or alternative school. All those will be married back together. But what I bring to the table is that I've got 20 years of management, and uh, and uh, and I've got a boatload of management courses behind me. I've got a BA in healthcare management. And I've got an MBA, and I'm working on my doctorate in uh, healthcare management. And uh, some of the things that's going on in the school today, uh, uh, if there was a, at least a smidgen of management, it would have been done. Um, but uh, uh, I'm looking to uh, come on board as your next school director, and and uh, and I'm. Uh, we got to bring this management back in order. We got to bring the leadership to drive it through, and it's not there. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we'll start. <clears throat> excuse me. Our question and answer period. Miss Clary, we're going to Mrs. Cleary. We're going to start with you. Uh, Mr. Higgins mentioned Common Core, and here is the question. What is your opinion regarding Common Core state standards? whose stated purpose is to promote real-world application at all grade levels in the subjects of language arts and math? Uh, well, currently uh, our staff is working to incorporate Common Core into our curriculum. Um, they're primarily in other subjects, not what were the two you listed? Language arts and math. Language arts and math are the two that they're doing right now. Um, and they're working to integrate it. What was the rest of the question? Do you agree with, you, uh, you know? I have not, you know. Mr. Some Hick people don't, so yeah. I'm asking if Ms. you do. Yeah, Mr. Hickens um, <clears throat> does not believe in the Common Core standards. They, I have researched them. I did not know a lot about them until this race. Um, but I, I really don't see much of a problem with them. Okay, thank you. Mr. Higgins. Uh, the whole philosophy behind it is something I reject. We have professional educators here, we have parents who care about their kids, and we have uh, empty three-piece suit bureaucrats in Washington, D.C., many of whom have never been in the classroom. We're going to try and micromanage what we do, trying to set our standards when they have an agenda that I think is, is very troubling. I don't want them running our show. We can run our show. If they have some good ideas, we will implement them as we see fit. They're trying to bribe us with money, and you can tell that uh, how much money Washington, D.C. has. Uh, they're about to run out, or maybe they've run out, I guess, until Ben Bernanke prints some more. 
But uh, as far as I'm concerned, our kids are not for sale. And that's what they want to do, bribe us to give our kids away. No, we're not going to do that. It's up to me. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Becker, I'm going to have you go first on this question. Following up on the Common Core state standards, there was an announcement in last Sunday's newspaper that Washington is the eighth state to formally adopt the next generation science standards to be implemented in all K-12 through public schools by the 2016-17 school year. This will teach those same real-world applications at all grade levels in the subjects of physical science, life science, earth and space science, and engineering. In your opinion, what impact will this have on Richland schools? I'm not sure so much about the physical science, but I can tell you a little bit about uh, um, uh, what was the last one? Engineering. Engineering. Uh, engineering and the other one. Uh, let me draw back in history and let me let me kind of highlight something. Um, there were scientists back in World War II that were graduate that the schools were graduating newer scientists. And these people were having problems with it, the older scientists, because they were coming and not even having, having the basic calculations down. And so when we're talking about science and mathematics here in our school, uh, the way it's set up is that if, if, even if the child gets the number wrong on a mathematic equation, um, uh, they're going to accept it. So yeah. That's the right answer. Even if, even if uh, 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 take the old equation of four times three, okay. Thank you, Mr. Jansen's Your opinion on the state adopting these next generation science standards? On its impact on the Richland School District. So first, let me say that the Common Core State Standards and the Next Generation Science Standards were not designed or developed by the federal government. These were state-sponsored initiatives, and they're voluntary standards. Now, Washington State has chosen to adopt those standards, so the local school boards really don't have a choice. However, I can tell you that Richland standards are very high and won't be going down. The Next Generation Science Standards just add on to the English and the, the English language arts and the math standards that are already there. These standards are challenging. I've read through them. My, my kids are, are still in school and I get to see the impact on the homework and what they're learning. And they're the standards. The other thing I need to say about standards is standards are just the minimum expectations our teachers do more. So I expect that our school district will, will implement these science standards and continue to improve on the already great science education the kids are getting. Thank you. I'll remind all four of you, look out at the cameras, even though I'm asking you the questions. <laughs> it, is, it is hard to hear. Sounds like we're in the ocean up here with this um, air conditioning or whatever. Okay, um, Mr. Higgins, you're gonna go first on this next question. How important do you think bilingual classes are and would you like to see them expanded in the Richland School District? I've, I teach bilingual classes in Pasco and in Kennewick. Uh, I think it is a very good way to transition children into English. However, there's a certain practical limitation. Uh, in Kennewick, I believe they have like 14 different languages. Pasco, I think they have 17 different languages. Pasco has two bilingual course, uh, classes. They have one in Russian and one in Spanish. I was privileged in one day to give to Spanish from eight to nine and from Russian from uh, nine to three. Uh, thankfully, the kids knew a lot more English than I knew Spanish or Russian. I think it's a good way to transition them into it. There are certain practical limitations, but the ultimate objective is for them to learn English. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Clary. I would agree with Mr. Higgins. Um, bilingual has proved to be successful in other school districts. Uh, I think I've read studies that say it's uh, the, the sooner you can transition the children eventually into the English language, the better it is for the students. Um, 
We've had space limitations in our buildings recently where we don't really have space available to have special programs such as bilingual education, but with the passage of our bonds, uh, we will have space available in the next coming years, and I'm sure it's something that we will examine and look into. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Janssen, you'll go first on this question. Bullying, especially among elementary school-aged children, has received a lot of attention in the past few years. Do you think that the policies and procedures of the Richland School District are effective in dealing with the causes and impact of bullying, and would you recommend any changes? So first, yes, we have policies and procedures on bullying, and for those of you in the audience, you can look around the walls in Carmichael Middle School here and see some of the the signatures of kids who talk about not bullying, their commitment to not bully and to be supportive of each other. That said, there's these are kids, we have over 11,000 of them, it will happen, and what I have seen, what I've experienced firsthand over the years from our administrators is fast and effective responses to these. So I think that we have good bullying policies in place and that to the best of their ability, our administrators and teachers are doing a good job of addressing those concerns. Thank you. Mr. Becker. Well, I haven't, I haven't heard much out of, out, of, out of the Richmond School District for bullying. And apparently for the policies that, he's, that uh, Mr. Jansen has stated, uh, apparently they must work fairly decent. But the thing that I would, I would push a little bit is that nobody is better than, than the next guy. Let's all work together. But, but outside of that, I don't, I don't think I really have a comment. Okay. I'm now going to ask a couple of questions of all four of you. I'm going to begin with you, Mrs. Clary, and go down the line. I'm going to ask that you just take one minute to answer timers. So here is the first question. Is there a specific area in the Richland School District's current curriculum that you feel needs improvement or possibly a new approach? I can't think of a single thing in our curriculum that um, is weak. Um, our staff works very hard at um, keeping up with whatever is current practice, what are the best practices available. Um, our students excel in school and are doing quite well. Thank you, Mr. Higgins. I've taught at uh, Richland High School, teach math as a substitute. Uh, and I've generally been very, very impressed by the commitment of the uh, teachers in the math department especially. Their uh, performance on the geometry end of course exam was exemplary. And that was because of the ownership that the teachers showed into ensuring that their students learned the subject matter. So I was very impressed. However, I w want to say this. It's important that the children learn their multiplication tables when they're in elementary school. It's very important. If, if they don't, it will handicap them the rest of their lives in the uh, field of mathematics. I've had uh, high school students who did not know their multiplication tables. Obviously, there was a problem at the elementary level. Thank you. Mr. Becker. Uh, I used to have a child in school, too, a couple of them. And uh, from what I've noticed, even at the uh, well, I was at the seventh grade level, my, my boy was not even doing multiplication. He even had it in front of him, and he wasn't doing any, any of that. Uh, when, when you see problems like that, I think the teachers need to go on and do remedial training. If not, um, have a different instructor come in and, and do that teaching. But these are the, some of the changes I'd like to see where if you got a student that's having problems with such as mathematics, then, then instead of using the same teacher, bring in a different one because maybe they'll understand it better. Thank you, Mr. Jansen. So there are a few things that um, we can work on to improve curriculum in the Richland School District. One of them is, and this has been brought up at the school board and, and made part of our priorities for the next few years, is to look at different kinds of magnet schools for some of our elementary schools. Things like uh, science, technology, engineering, and math elementary school, 
or uh, foreign language kinds of elementary schools, things like that. The other area where I think we need to continue to improve is in the area of science education at our secondary levels. As we see the next generation standards coming in, it provides us an opportunity to take a look at these systems and to improve the curriculum we have. Thanks. Okay, we'll start with you, Mr. Jansons, and go back now <clears throat> on this last question with a one minute answer. You may answer either one or both of these questions. One, do you remember your favorite book that you were required to read in high school? Why was it your favorite? And, or, who is your favorite children's author and why? Okay, maybe it's the same, the same book. Um, my favorite book was the Tolkien series, um, Lord of the Rings in high school, and it was a required read. And uh, I don't know if it's considered a children's book or not, but, but I read it in fifth grade, and my daughters have read it, and uh, she's in fifth grade. The other, the other favorite book, I do have to tell you this one. In second grade, I read a biography of John Paul Jones, and that has stuck with me for the last 45-plus years. And it's one of the reasons I joined the Navy was because of wooden ships and, and the father of the Navy. Thank you. Mr. Becker. Uh, a favorite book? No, I can't remember any favorite book. Uh, Do you have a favorite children's author or regular author? Oh, on, on, on regular authors, I go with uh, like Mark Levine or Bill O'Reilly, people like that. But um, I don't think you need to hear politics tonight. Uh, uh, no, I, re I read the book for what it's worth and then and then that's it, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Higgins. Okay, my favorite author is Jack London. I loved his adventure stories, and my favorite book was uh, Tales of the Fish Patrol. This was his ex uh, stories related to his experience when he worked uh, in the fishing industry in San Francisco Bay. When I read that, I was living in New Jersey. I never had the wildest, my wildest dreams, I would never be in California. It's a very exotic place. Was, Lo and behold, my senior year was spent in the Bay Area of San Francisco, right around there. So that was very, very intriguing, and I, I really enjoy Jack London and his adventure stories. Thank you. Mrs. Cleary? Uh, when I was in high school, I was in California, and I remembered, uh, I really enjoyed reading Mice and Men. Uh, it was a great book, and it sort of related to the area that I was living in, kind of brought it to life. Uh, favorite children's author, I think, my children and I always loved reading Dr. Seuss. So, Dr. Seuss. Okay, thank you. You probably didn't think that was real pertinent to running the Richland School District, but I always think it's interesting to see what people like to read. Okay, we're gonna move to closing statements. And for Director One, Mr. Higgins, uh, would you please go first? Yes, ma'am. My recent and continuing experience as a classroom teacher in a variety of public school settings, subjects, locations, and age groups. My experience as a school bus driver. My long-term association with Richland Public Schools as a parent. My involvement in a wide variety of youth activities. My experience as an instructor and examiner in various military and commercial settings. My own educational background. My commitment to the educational development of our youth in a healthy and safe environment. And my commitment to local control of education and continued parental involvement. I will be able to make a positive contribution to the school board. There are other issues, but if we forfeit local control, the important decisions affecting our youth and their future will be made for us. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to let, you, uh, let me tell you about myself and why, am I, why I'm running. My name is Ron Higgins. My website is www.higgins, H-I-G-G-I-N-S, the number four, richlandschools.com. I'm running for the Richland School uh, District Director number one position and I appreciate your support. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Clary. I'd like to thank the League and the, their partners for providing the forum tonight. Never in my wildest dreams did I ever think I would run for elective office until a former school board member encouraged me to apply for a vacant board position in 2005. Before I was a board member, I was a classroom volunteer, PTA officer, and I worked to pass bonds and levies. I volunteered because I wanted Richland schools to be the best that they could be. 
It also taught me the personal rewards of volunteering. Through volunteering, I learned how schools operate, and it gave me the chance to meet other parents and staff. Being a volunteer has made me a better school board member. As a board member, I work hard at being approachable and a good listener. I'm an open-minded person who looks at each and every issue from a variety of perspectives before making a decision. Having skills like open-mindedness and a lack of a personal agenda are valuable qualities for a school board member to possess because sometimes the best solutions are reached out by listening to others to find a workable compromise. That's why I believe I'm the clear choice for Richland Schools and I appreciate your vote in the November 5th election. Thank you. Thank you. Now we'll turn to Director Tu and Mr. Becker. Please go first. I wish to thank everybody listening to me tonight, but uh, still the reason why I'm running for the board is, is that is exactly what the name means, Board of Directors. It means the taxpayer and the parent tells the school board exactly what needs to be done and the school board needs to execute whatever needs to be done. Uh, we don't run off in willy-nilly land and do what we want to do. Uh, we listen to our taxpayers and we listen to the parents. And, and the problem that the parents, all the parents, need to hear from all of the directors to both sides of the common core, the good side and the bad side. And one of the bad sides is the common core takes away parental and taxpayer input and puts it in Washington, D.C. with the Secretary of Education. Um, and this is how most of the states have gotten Common Core in. And, and I want to slow the process down or else stop it because the school board, the school board is responsible to ensure that the, that the community is being educated to their children. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Janssens. Hi, again, my name is Rick Janssens. I'm running for re-election to the school board. You've heard a lot of talk about different issues and uh, some of the technicalities that are facing us right now. But I want to leave you with this. I'm passionate about this. Microphone's cutting out. I'm passionate about this work. This work is important to the future of our community, and it's important to the future of our state, and it's important to the future of each of the students with whom you entrust the staff of our school district. My goal is to deliver the best education possible for each one of these students, and they, many of them have different learning styles. It's important to me to try to meet the needs of all of the students and do this as efficiently and effectively as possible in order to keep your tax rates low and to wisely use the resources you've entrusted to us. I've been doing this for 12 years. I have the leadership and experience and management experience needed to run a hundred million dollar plus organization like the Richland School District. I ask for your vote and thank you for your time. Thank you. I'd like to thank all four of these candidates for being here tonight. They are again running for Director 1, Heather Cleary and Ron Higgins, and for Director 2, Lloyd Becker and Rick Jansen. <laughs>